Hey everybody, Jazzy here, back today with another Don't Starve Hamlet guide for you. Today, I want to take an in-depth look at the economy system in Hamlet, which revolves around the pig traders and their shops. Now, Hamlet is the first DLC to incorporate currency into the game, and this mechanic of buying and selling goods impacts player survival in a very substantial way. So, if you're looking to craft a viable late game strategy for survival, you would do well to at least familiarize yourself with this system. And in that endeavor, I hope to be of service. In part one of this two-part series, we will talk about the variety of pig shops, all the things available to purchase, and some good practices for how to best utilize each shop. The next release will focus on the many ways by which we can make money and become the wealthiest done pig in all of the constants. Pig shops are structures located in two places on the map. The first is in Swinesbury, the town located on the island on which you spawn. The other location is in the palace town, which can be reached via ancient pig ruins. You will always get one of each shop in every world, and once you get the key to the city from the palace, you can build as many of your own shops anywhere you want. So let's start with the shops you can find on day one by wandering into Swinesbury. Most of these shops serve basic wares such as food, minerals, and healing items. Considering how hard it is to acquire some of these materials in the wild, it's never a bad idea to check out the local merchants to see what they have for sale. Their wares change daily, so it's good to check back every so often if you can't find what you're looking for. Curly Tails Mud Spa is the local holistic healthcare store, offering numerous healing items like honey poultice, healing salve, and blue caps. Not sure how the coffee beans and green caps fit in here, but I'd assume pharmaceutical sales are getting quietly supplemented with a back room filled with grow lights for cultivating coffee and psychedelics. Regardless, all of the items are rather cheap and very convenient in a pinch if you have low health or are poisoned. Three oinks for a blue cap is some of the cheapest health you will find anywhere. I just wish coffee beans had their own dedicated pedestal and I might never link to a shipwrecked world. The shop is manned by a beautician pig which will accept feathers for trading. Swinesbury Fine Grocers is your one-stop shop for raw meats, fruits, and veggies. They even have a dedicated pedestal for ice, which is very easy crockpot filler for one oink. If you're looking for cooking ingredients, then for five oinks, you can buy frog legs plus three ice and make meatballs. If you need sanity, you can buy one banana and one ice for a two oink banana pop. For health, you can spend five oinks on ingredients for a froggy bunwich, but you have plenty of health options at the deli and spa, so I probably wouldn't bother unless you have weevil carapaces. If you have carapaces, buy any one oink veggie and make hard shell tacos for a very cheap 20 health. The grocer is probably the shop I visit the most frequently, and once you make your own crockpot station, you will definitely want some of these nearby. A pig shopkeep runs the store and will trade for your hedge clippings. The Sterling Trough Deli sells crockpot meals already conveniently prepared for you. For those of you who think the bundling wrap is overpowered, consider that the food in this store never spoils. So if you're not much of a meatball hoarder, or if it's just more time efficient for you to make money than to cook up a bunch of food, this is a nice way of never having to worry about cooking and storing food. Now, when shopping at the deli, you want to consider the cost efficiency of each dish versus the cost of its ingredients from the grocer. For example, Meatballs cost 10 oinks at the deli, but you can buy the ingredients from the grocer for 5. Pierogi costs 10, but if you have a birdcage, you can make it for 6 with grocer food. Regardless, there is some value to be considered with time saved from not having to cook food, so perhaps it's worth it to you. I'm pretty fast with the crock pot, so it's usually not worth it to me. Now, based solely on hunger to price ratio, the best dishes to buy are actually the cheaper items like pumpkin cookies and stuffed eggplant. If you are Weber or Wormwood, monster lasagna is the way to go. Stay away from the pricier foods like dragon pie and honey ham, they actually have the worst deals for hunger. Now if it's health you're after, consider that froggy bunwich, honey nuggets, and pierogi all have the same coin to heart ratio. Although the first two have a much better hunger ratio than pierogi. The food with the best health deal is actually waffles, but again, I should mention that the mud spa typically has better deals for pure healing. A pig shopkeep runs the store here as well. Miss Sow's Floral Arrangements has an interesting variety of plants for sale. Ignore the ripoff of specific seeds unless you're trying to force the store to restock with better items, because most of the veggies can be bought directly from the grocer for the same price or one extra coin. Pine cones are a good buy, because they're the only way to get evergreens in Hamlet, probably the best trees for log farms. The best deal here though is berry bushes. Two oinks for a resource that has up until now been non-renewable without world hopping. 
Over time, you can fill your world with berry bushes of both varieties, although it does seem like the regular type comes up for sale more often than the leafy variant. Berry bushes are a great food source and produce a valuable trading item, so they are certainly worth growing at any hamlet base. I'd recommend checking this shop frequently and eventually building one of your own. A pig florist runs the shop and will accept petals as trade. Pig and Piglet's general store sells tools and minerals. You can also pick up some basic survival stuff like miner hats, umbrellas, and backpacks. Flint is not typically a problem to acquire, so I don't really mess with the tools. A miner hat is useful though, and if you are killing or netting glowflies, then you can keep it topped off. Probably the most important item in here is the cloth, because it's the only place you can find it besides your parachute basket at spawn. Cloth is needed for a pith hat and gas mask, so if you plan on making both, then eventually you will need to buy cloth from here, or a pith hat from the hat shop. The general store is manned by a banker pig who accepts non-purple gems for trade. Swinesbury Academy is where you can trade any lost relics you find in the ruins or deep forest for 10-piece oinks. Early game, these relics are a very good source of money, even if they are not the most renewable. The shop is somewhat redundant because you can trade your relics with any professor pigs wandering around town, including the one who works here. But it wouldn't be much of an academy if they didn't display anything they acquired, so I can't fault them too much. Okay, Swinesbury Mineral Exchange is the local bank. Here you can trade up your single oinks for larger currency, which will be good for managing your wallet when the money starts to stack up. You can also buy gold here, which is the only thing making gold renewable in Hamlet. It gets expensive though, so if you plan on relying on this shop for gold, make sure you have a renewable method of making more oinks. As expected, a banker pig works here as well. I'll discuss this more in part two, but once you acquire a pan flute and the royal gallery items, the mineral exchange is very easily abused by stealing and rebuilding for an absurd net gain of oinks. I generally shy away from this method because it is ridiculously cheap, but I do plan to discuss it. Swinesbury City Hall. Okay, I included this as a shop because while it technically is a government building, inside can be found items available to purchase and a pig who accepts trades. Here you can find the Deed of Home Ownership, which allows you to purchase the local Slanty Shanty. The House Expansion Permit lets you add a room to your home by placing the permit on a door inside. The Demolition Permit gives you the ability to later remove these rooms by placing it on the door outside the room. The Security Contract allows you to contract Royal Guards to your service for two and a half days. They will fight for you, however, unlike Reign of Giants pigs, they will not chop trees, which makes zero sense. You guys have a weapon that can literally be used as an axe. Meanwhile, your buddies in the wild are chopping with their bare paws. Just take my money, you lazy, corrupt bums. Anyways, all these items become available in the city planning tab once you get the key to the city, and the shanty actually costs fewer oinks when acquired this way. Mayor Truffleston resides here and will gladly take all your gold off your hands for five oinks each. I would love to know the mayor's relationship with the local banker. Maybe they do a little insider trading, price setting to keep buying gold cheap and selling high? God bless deregulated capitalism. Okay, that's it for Swinesbury, moving on to the palace. This town can be accessed by traveling through the ancient pig ruins. Look for an entrance adorned with a statue of a regal-looking pig. These ruins will lead you to another island where you can find the palace town. And these shops tend to feature much more specialized items for sale. The Boar's Tusk Weapon Shop sells weapons, explosives, and traps. 50 oinks for a cutlass is prohibitive, but you probably won't find a better weapon in the game. So it's a viable option, especially if you have yet to prototype a dark sword. Coconade is a good buy as well because you will probably need explosives to access the Apocalypse calendar and other secret ruins rooms. Plus, you can only make so much gunpowder with the little niter you can expect to find in the wild. You will need azure feathers for a Hogus Porcusator, so grab a boomerang if you plan to 360 no scope pigeons while you're in town. A pig hunter mans the shop here, so if you have any spare stingers from scorpions, hand them over. The Flying Pig Arcane Shop is the magic store. You can acquire several magic tab items here, but most importantly, you can buy living logs for five oinks, which is a great deal. You probably won't want to bother with the other stuff unless you enjoy wearing a belt of hunger. However, I will say that the one-man band has a few very unique and powerful uses in Hamlet. And I am actually going to do a dedicated guide on this item because there's quite a bit to discuss, but more on that later. An erudite pig runs the shop and will accept nightmare fuel as trade. The Sow's Ear Hat Shop sells a number of different hats, including many that are otherwise unobtainable in Hamlet. If you visit the store during the first temperate season, you'll probably be looking for a pith hat. It's cheap, and is the only hat besides a bat cowl that prevents slowdown during heavy fog. Tam Ashanter and Moggles are good deals as well. Now, until your spider monkeys start to infest more trees, silk will not be the easiest item to acquire. So if you're looking to build your own hat shop, it's probably easier to buy the two top hats here than farm 12 silk. 
Also, because of the scarcity of hound's teeth, you might want to consider foregoing the crafting of sewing kits and instead just buy new hats from here when your old ones break. A pig hat maker runs the shop and will trade for your silk. The Tinkerer's Tower is the local KOTOR blueprint shop, offering a rather pricey alternative to linking worlds for the purpose of crafting stuff only available in other DLCs. I almost never use this shop because once I build a Skyworthy, all of the crafting recipes I'd ever need are just a short hop away. If the blueprints were just a little bit cheaper and offered more variety, I would find more value here. But sorry to say that a lot of this store's implementation is just half-baked. Okay, here's what I mean. The Moggle's blueprint costs 50 oinks. Okay, first of all, I haven't seen a Moleworm in Hamlet since early access. But assuming I did somehow find two, why would I buy the Glowberry for 20 oinks when I can just buy the freaking Moggles from the hat shop for 20 oinks? Secondly, have you considered the cost of crafting a weather pane using this shop? Let's do the math. 100 oinks for the blueprint, 10 for the gear, 5 for the volt goat horn, and <laughs> 400 for the down feathers. Yeah, I can think of a better use for 515 oinks than a weapon I might use to chop trees when I get bored. But the real blueprint winner here is the high bear nation vest. Okay, it doesn't really get cold in Hamlet, but I really want the lowered hunger rate, but I don't want a belt of hunger for some reason. So let me buy the blueprint. Oh, interesting. I don't need the blueprint in this DLC, just an alchemy engine. Okay, whatever. The recipe calls for a dapper vest. Huh. So I'll just buy 40 oinks worth of hound's teeth and 30 oinks worth of silk from Mr. Oddjob, then return to my alchemy engine only to discover that I can't prototype a dapper vest in Hamlet. So to make the hibernation vest, I need to travel to Reign of Giants anyway to prototype the dapper vest. I love you, Clay. You know I do. I've made a YouTube channel for your game, but you boofed this one just a little bit. You know what would have been a good blueprint to sell here? A horned helmet. The shipwrecked equivalent to the football helmet. Buy your five oink horn from the oddity store and now you no longer need to waste any pigskin on armor. I don't know. In lieu of any prices low enough to actually compete with the minor inconvenience of traveling to other DLCs to prototype items, this store just seems redundant with an amazing concept baked into a completely missed opportunity. And on that overly cynical note, we arrive at the Cadillac of pig shops. The Sty Oddities Emporium. On the surface seems like a low overhead thrift store, but is in fact one of the best shops in the game. You can buy every Reign of Giants boss drop here, the benefit of which really cannot be overstated. This shop is also the only place where you can acquire gears and mandrakes renewably. The big caveat is that most of the useful items here cannot be used in any crafting recipes available in Hamlet, meaning you either need to travel to a linked world to prototype or buy an expensive blueprint from the Tinkerer's Tower. Once you link up your worlds, however, this shop becomes a very easy method for acquiring some of the best items in the game, such as the walking cane and eyebrella. If you're a fan of scale chests, you can easily stockpile scales, where in Reign of Giants you can only acquire one per year. Similarly, you could buy three eyeballs, rush all three ruins in Reign of Giants, and get those three houndiest shootiuses crafted right away instead of waiting over 200 days to be able to fight three deer clops. You know what? This shop is not quite overpowered enough yet. Let's throw in a collector pig to run the store who, as we will see in the next guide, is one of the best pig traders in the game. Yeah, you want to build the store as soon as you can. For three ball peen hammers and some pig skin, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Believe it or not, that's it for the pig shops. As you can see, this economy system offers to players a rather expansive catalog of goods available to purchase. And the fact that you can use the key to the city to build pig shops literally anywhere, including other DLCs, has quickly and forever redefined what it means to survive in the constant. In the next video, we will take a comprehensive dive into the many methods by which we can acquire oinks which we can use to purchase goods from these stores and be gleeful participants in the easily corrupted free market system. I hope you found this guide useful and please subscribe if you want to see more Don't Starve guides and gameplay videos from me in the future. Thanks and see you next time.